All right, college football addiction. Talking a little bit about this Florida Tennessee game from a Florida perspective, and you know, I I know that we get all the comments in the world about, oh, well, you're just a Florida State fan, you're a hater, this that, and the other. I, I try to be pretty objective on this, and I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I've gotten several comments from Florida fans that are like, yeah, we we don't necessarily like you or don't necessarily like the team you play for, but you do keep it pretty objective, and and I think I've done a good job of that on this channel. If you disagree, that's fine. Try to bring on Florida folks that give that perspective, and then I'll you know share mine here on the on the post game reaction before we do any of that our thoughts and prayers are with anybody impacted by milton obviously a really really rough situation for people that had just been impacted by helene um but thank the lord not very much damage or, or really any kind of um issues here in my house a little bit north of the city of tampa some power outage for a few days um you know it, several of you watch ali's channel i know that she's been a little slow to get content back going as well got something coming out today with her but um you know no power over her house right now still um but trying to make it through and, and our thoughts and prayers are with the people that were impacted much more is more than a rivalry more than an overtime loss more than you know a, a guy talking smack on the internet your your family your home your your belongings your possessions obviously much more important than any of that so our thoughts and prayers are certainly with you especially those impacted in the florida area and, and then other places as well that have been dealing with the storm uh that passed last time with helene as well so uh, if you've made it through Milton, we're thankful. And if you're struggling at all, hopefully this provides you a bit of a distraction. So all that aside, we could put the rivalry down. We could put the hate down for a minute and, and, and realize that that's more important than anything. So, uh, hopefully you guys out there watching are doing well and hopefully your power is coming back on and everything else, your yard cleanup's going well. So as far as this game goes, um, Tennessee wins it, um, in overtime, 23, 17, you know, I, I, you know, Florida State, you know, I, we, we always get comments, oh, Florida State's in a bigger mess than, probably, right? I understand that Florida State's record. All that aside, Napier, with some of the most gross mismanagement I've ever seen in a game, um, he just absolutely has to go, you know, and, and as a, listen, as a, somebody who doesn't necessarily love the University of Florida or their football program, I don't care if they kept him forever. I just don't think he's a very good coach. I think Florida fans would agree with that down here in the comments. You can let me know. But it, Florida... <laughs> I don't know if Tennessee won this game or if, if Florida just truly went out and lost it. I, I, you know, I, I am just beyond shocked beyond belief at how bad Napier was in this game. And at the end of the day, they were still this close to overcoming it all. And his decision making just continues to just be piss poor. And it, it is so shockingly bad. It's some of the worst in college football. Um, it, it just nothing makes sense. And I don't know if he just tries to outthink himself or try to anticipate what, you know, Hypeville going to do over on the other side. And so he 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 tries to, you know, think three steps ahead or what's going on. But it is just the most basic, simple stuff. The fourth down decision, the fourth and what you've got. DJ Lagway, who is, I mean, you're watching all these other freshman quarterbacks. You're watching like Rayola. You're watching Nico. Neither of them have been incredibly sharp, especially against good competition. Like Nico wasn't very good last night. Rayola has been pretty hit or miss um, when he's played really good competition. Lagway might be the best freshman out there. And I know there are other guys that like, I'm not, you know, somebody will say, oh, what about this guy? Like Lagway's been great, right? He's been true freshman moments. He had the pick last night. I get it. But... <laughs> How you don't just get up under center, and maybe he's not comfortable taking snaps under center. I, again, I'd point that to you got to get him ready for those situations. But on fourth and less than a yard, how are you not sneaking it? If if you it almost like you you almost if you just do the right thing, even if you get stuffed, you can say, "Oh, you made the right decision, and the other team made a play." But when you take the ball out of the hands of 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 the potential playmaker but when you take the ball out of the hands of the playmaker you you take the ball out of the hands of the 240 pound huge quarterback you got back there the the basically fullback that's got the ball you may think you think urban would have done something like that you think urban i mean urban had percy you don't think urban would have just laid tebow over the top of that thing and said go get the half a yard I don't know, man. That was, to me, that was, and, and you got one of the best centers. Listen, I'm giving Florida a lot of credit here for a guy that's got the Bobby Bowden signed football up there, right? Like, I, I'm I'm giving Florida credit here. You've got the, one of the best centers in the league, in, in all of college football, but also, of course, the, the SEC, and you don't go get the yard with that? 
horrible decision. And then it's almost like he was like, okay, well, I second guess myself last time. Let me sneak it with Mertz here down at the goal line. This should do it. Montreal Johnson was absolutely eating on that drive. The running game looked great and got you down to the one. In fact, what a play by Tennessee to get them down at the one when it looked like Johnson was going to get in the end zone because you gave Billy Napier a chance to go screw it up, and he did. You go sneak it with Mertz. You go sneak it with a guy who, you know, had a collarbone injury last year and and and, and unfortunately got injured this week, you know, and, and you hope that he's okay. It looked pretty serious. But the idea to go sneak it with Mertz, then you take more points off the board. If you just if, – if you just – on fourth down, I, it was the right call to go for it. Uh, but if you just kick the field goal there, you win the game. If you just kick the field goal instead of sneaking it with Mertz, you win the game. Now, you wouldn't kick a field goal on, you know, a down that's not fourth, but you do. And then when you have a field goal attempt, the one thing that everybody got on you for last year and the one thing you touted was your special team's efficiencies and this, that, and the other. And you end up putting 12 guys on the field. And then you blame it on the players. Oh, well, it was a, it was a, in the press, post-game press conference. Oh, it was an injured guy. you got to have a coach that's counting the guys. You got, I, I don't understand how that's a thing. you got to have that tightened up. Those three things, the fourth down decision, the sneak with Mertz, and the field goal at the end of the half. Again, did Tennessee win this game, or did Florida literally give it away? I think once the field goal, and that would have just been 6 nothing. It's not like that would have been some major uh, obstacle for Tennessee to overcome. When those three things happened, I think you knew the game was over. You knew that Tennessee was going to find a way to win this game. Or that Florida would find a way to give it back to them. Now, better in the second half, for sure. I thought adjustments were fine. Um, yeah, before we go on too much further, obviously, you hate to see the stuff happen with Montreal Johnson. You hate to see the stuff happen with Graham Mertz. Um I don't know what the outlook for both those guys are. You know, both look pretty serious. And uh, and you hope that they are able to play a little bit more, yeah, especially, you know, I mean, Johnson's probably going to the league next year anyway. But Mertz, a sixth-year guy, like, that sucks. And and even as a rival, you, I don't like to see that. That sucks. Um, defense did look good. I thought the defense created a ton of pressure. I thought the defensive ends were really good. I thought they took advantage of Tennessee's tackles, which there was some concern there. Could they hold up? And they didn't. I, I thought, I mean, maybe it, it you know, I, I don't really buy into the like, oh, we changed things during the bye week and it's gotten better. But I mean, proof's in the pudding. They look better both games defensively for sure. Uh, Nico did miss a lot of guys. I will say that UF secondary still needs a lot of work. I think the safety got hurt too. Moten, I don't, I don't know what the issue there is either. But um, Nico did miss some guys. Like Tennessee had their chances in the first half too. Like he missed a couple of deep, deep bombs that should have gone for touchdowns had had they not just been barely missed. And uh, that's a concern. I think Florida secondary is is still a concern. Um, up front though, they played much better. Linebackers. Um, uh, defensive line was way, way better. Uh, lagway highs and lows, right? Certainly at, at times looks really good at times. Not so good. The pick was just a bad true freshman moment. I mean, true freshmen are going to be true freshmen at times. Um, but he rebounded from that really well. And, uh, obviously the, the drive at the end of the game, I mean, he gets the ball in really good field position, shout out the special teams there for creating back-to-back -back opportunities, you know, down inside of Tennessee territory. They don't convert the first time. And then, you know, uh, Tamari DK, I think I'm saying that correctly. Um, some really good returns. He's pretty electric. That was a huge hit in the portal, especially with some of their other other wide receivers being down and, and kind of hampered this year. Um, you know, to 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 get the big play um, in the punt return, and then obviously the the pass on what third and eighteen. There's zero chance that Tennessee Tennessee should give that up. There's zero chance that a true freshman should be able to beat you on third and eighteen. And he went out and did it. And so Lagway with the absolute highs, the absolute lows. Yeah, I said this when I was talking about the Tennessee perspective on this. I, if you're Napier, I get it. I get being conservative. I, I don't understand not going for two there. I think you got a chance to win on the road. 100,000 people, you know, screaming down your neck. You know, you got a true freshman quarterback. Your, your running back one is hurt. Your job is on the line. Go down swinging. You know, Josh Heupel went for it on fourth and one from his own 11. Maybe that's stupid. Maybe it's not. Whatever. Go for two, right? Like, that is the play there. You, you don't. Did I? No part of me thought that Florida had any chance in overtime. Now, weird things happen. Maybe you had a deflection. Maybe you had a tip ball. Maybe you, maybe something weird happens, and, and you do win in overtime. But did you really think you were going to win in overtime? Oh, well, we made him use the timeout. We did the trick. Don't do that. No, that's, that's BS, right? If you want to make him use a timeout, line up in a very exotic formation with, you know, use like a fake, and maybe that's all it was. Maybe they never were going to go for two. But like, you know, line up with... Jaden Baugh in the backfield and Lagway split out wide. I guarantee you Tennessee would have taken their time out there. 
and then you come back and run whatever play you were going to run, right? Or just man up and actually go get the three yards. Their running game was really good last night. Roll Lagway out, let the five star, let the best freshman quarterback in the league, go make a play and live with the results. Going to overtime was the absolute coward move that just really sums up like, I just don't think Napier's cut out for it. On the, you know the rules. LSU didn't go for two because they were at home because they were playing a little bit better offensively. Nussmeyer had left two drives in a row to be really good. It, it, it's a different kind of game. You needed a short field to be able to go out and have a chance and a third and 18 conversion. You weren't winning that game in overtime. I think all get, I mean, Gator fans, you're still watching now 10 minutes in. Do you agree with that? Like not going for two, there's other things to criticize for sure. And we did. Not going for two there doesn't make a lot of sense to me. You've got nothing to lose. Your job's on the line. You're getting fired this year unless some crazy things happen down the stretch. You find a way to a bowl. You beat tennis, You beat Kentucky. You beat Florida State and upset somebody else. Maybe you keep your job. But the gross mismanagement in this game was on another level, not going for two. I don't understand it at all. You got Kentucky next week. They're coming off of a loss to Vandy. You play a second team in a row coming off of a loss. Maybe that's good news. Maybe it's not. I think Kentucky is certainly a weird team. They, they I mean, Vandy's good this year. It's weird to say, isn't it? But um, Kentucky looks like they're up and down and up and down. Which Kentucky do you get next week? Which uh, Florida do you get next week? How do those teams match up? We'll certainly talk about that through the week. We'll get Allie on. We'll get my buddy Clay on to talk about it from the Kentucky perspective. So hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. But, man, let me know your thoughts. I, I think you got to get rid of Napier. And I don't know if it's this week. I don't know if it's later. You know, the team's still bought in. You haven't lost the locker room. So maybe you keep him for the next few weeks just because of that and cut him loose after Georgia. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, it, it seems pretty rough um, from that perspective. And I just, I don't know, just again, Tennessee got the win, but Florida went out and lost it. And, and I don't, I think the Florida's players shout out to them, man. They, they never quit. They absolutely never hang their heads. They fight. Um, but their coach just, it, it, he doesn't put them in positions to win. And at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. And that's why he's probably not going to have a job coming forward. Um, so let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Appreciate you guys as always for tuning in college football addiction. We enjoy doing this again, thoughts and prayers with everybody impacted by the storms. And uh, we'll be back to talk with you soon on college football addiction.